All right, hello and welcome. So, so much of the Christian life is spent in this space in between understanding the hope that God has for our lives and and the promises that He's installed in our heart and those things actually, you know, happening, right? And so, the natural human response in this middling space is to question, is to complain, is to grumble, is to get frustrated. And that's normal. In fact, it's even encouraged by God. We'll get to that in just a second. But what's important is that we avoid complaining and being frustrated and grumbling to the wrong sources. We don't want to complain to the universe. We don't want to complain to the spirit of darkness. We don't want to complain to other people. How often have we stayed up till two, three in the morning, rolling around in our beds, rehearsing the same anxieties, the same arguments? The same frustrations that only lead to bitterness, hardness of heart, and a really dark path. Well, what if I told you that God has given us a skill set that he wants us to acquire, a way he wants to communicate with him when we feel this way, and it's called a lament, a lamentation. And that's just a fancy word for complaint. In fact, if you look in the book of Psalms, you'll see that there are 60 lament poems. That's more than any other type, including praise and worship. So this is a key skill that he wants us to have. And today I want to go over a couple of these psalms so that we can see how to properly flow from from hope to disappointment to lamentation to ultimately revelation, which is what this whole process is for. Let's check out the first one in Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain, beautiful in elevation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is in her palaces. He is known as her refuge. So what is happening here is that the Israelites are singing praises to God and reminding themselves that it doesn't matter what enemies are encroaching around the city gates, that as long as the temple is right over there, they're going to be protected and it's all going to work out for them. But we know that in the short term, the midterm, and even kind of the long term, it didn't really work out that way. God used a foreign nation, Babylon, to judge Israel, and he actually burned down the city and the temple and kidnapped all the Israelites into exile. So the next place we want to look in the Psalms is one of these lament poems where the Israelites are frustrated and they're complaining to God that this didn't go how they thought it would go based on the promises of God. Let's check out that one. This is in Psalm 137. And it goes, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive asked us for a song. And those who plundered us requested a mirth, saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Here are the Israelites now in quite a humiliating situation where the Babylonian captors are saying, you know what, can you guys sing us one of those songs, one of those psalms that you used to sing about how powerful your God is? I mean, we can imagine this, right? Imagine if uh, we and our church had been taken captive and we had all been kidnapped and our captors were sitting saying, you know what, what's that song that uh, Ashley sang the other day? You know, let every breath, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Could you guys, could you guys sing that? That's got a nice beat to it, right? And the Israelites are sitting here lamenting and complaining to God saying, God, how can we sing this song that you gave us when it's not even true? We're in a foreign land. Well, what did this lament, what did this complaint to God ultimately accomplish for them? Well, if we go to Ezekiel chapter 1, we see Ezekiel, the eventual prophet, sitting on the banks of a river in Babylon on his 30th birthday when he was supposed to become a priest, lamenting to God. And what is the vision that he got? Well, he got a vision that the Lord was coming on this mobile throne with wheels, giving him the revelation that, you know what? God cannot be confined to a temple. The whole earth is his throne and that he is on the move, he is still in the midst of his people, and his, still, his plan is still moving forward. He is doing a new thing, and they better get on board. And he went and spread that news to everyone. Now, you can have the same process in your life if you choose to, instead of complaining to other people or to yourself or rolling around in bed with the spirit of darkness being frustrated, complain to the Lord. Really let him have it, and you'll get a revelation. You guys, I hope this helps. I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for me. And I'll see you next time.